with a wingspan of 6 meters and a height of 1.2 meters when on the ground, Osteodonterni and similar giant pseudotooth birds were the second largest flying birds known, surpassed only by the Teratorn argentavis. It was probably most similar to the albatrosses, with long slender wings adapted for soaring vast distances over the open seas. They were the dominant seabirds of most oceans throughout most of the Cenozoic, and modern humans apparently missed encountering them only by a tiny measure of evolutionary time. Gasterny species were very large birds, and have traditionally been considered to be predators of small mammals. It has been suspected to have been an ambush hunter and used pack hunting techniques to pursue or ambush prey. If Gasterny was a predator, it would have certainly needed some other means of hunting prey through the dense forest. However, studies of their beak structure have caused scientists to reinterpret these birds as herbivores that probably fed on tough plant material and seeds. Its extinction is currently unclear, competition with mammals has often been cited as a possible factor. Although they looked like giant emus, the dromornis are more closely related to fowl. Australia had been separated from Gondwana for millions of years by this time. The animals of Australia had evolved very slowly in almost complete isolation from the animals of other continents and Dromornis n habited subtropical open woodlands, although the climate was very unpredictable. It was determined that Geniornis declined and became extinct over a short period, too short for it to be plausibly explained by climate change. It is considered the entire mass extinction event in Australia was due to human activity, rather than climate change. Among modern birds, Vegavis is most closely related to ducks, but it is not considered to be a direct ancestor of them. The discovery of this species demonstrates that the major groups of bird alive today had already diversified in the Cretaceous. Presbyornis was one of the first anseriforms. Because of its long legs and neck, it was initially mistaken for a flamingo, but it was reclassified as an anseriform when the duck-like anatomy of its skull and bill was found. It is presumed to have lived in colonies around shallow lakes. Many ducks, like mallards' feathers are excellent at shedding water due to special oils and they are generally herbivorous as adults. Many of the ducks display sexual dimorphism, with the males being more brightly colored than the females. Mallards are considered an invasive species in some regions. It is a very adaptable species, being able to live and even thrive in urban areas. They are causing severe genetic pollution to South Africa's biodiversity by breeding with endemic ducks. White-headed ducks dive and swim underwater. They are omnivorous, with vegetable matter predominating. They are reluctant to fly, preferring to swim for cover. This duck is considered endangered due to a large reduction in populations in the last 10 years. King eiders spend most of the year in coastal marine ecosystems at high latitudes, and migrate to Arctic tundra to breed in June and July. Due to its large population and vast range, the king eider is listed as a species of least concern. The oldest known king eider was a female that lived at least 18 years. Whooper swans require large areas of water to live in, especially when they are still growing, because their body weight cannot be supported by their legs for extended periods of time. The whooper swan spends much of its time swimming, straining the water for food, or eating plants that grow on the bottom. They pair for life and their cygnets stay with them all winter, they are sometimes joined by offspring from previous years.
Guinea fowl are particularly well suited to consuming massive quantities of ticks, which might otherwise spread Lyme disease. These birds are terrestrial, and prone to run rather than fly when alarmed. Like most gallinaceous birds, they have a short-lived explosive flight and rely on gliding to cover extended distances. They make loud harsh calls when disturbed. The red jungle fowl is the primary progenitor of the domestic chicken. It was first domesticated at least 5,000 years ago in Asia. Since then, its domestic form has spread around the world and is kept globally as a very productive food source of both meat and eggs. Flight in these birds is almost purely confined to reaching their roosting areas at sunset in trees or any relatively safe places free from ground predators, and for escape from immediate danger through the day. The Indian peafowl lives mainly on the ground in open forest and it is best known for the long train made up of elongated upper tail covert feathers which bear colorful eye spots. The function of the peacock's elaborate train has been debated for over a century. Charles Darwin found it a puzzle, hard to explain through ordinary natural selection. Later, other scientists argued that the train was a handicap, and that males were honestly signaling their fitness in proportion to the splendor of their trains. Despite extensive study, opinions remain divided on the mechanisms involved. The Congo peacock has physical characteristics of both the peafowl and the guineafowl, which may indicate that the Congo peacock is a link between the two families. They are omnivores with a diet consisting mainly of fruits and insects. Green pheasant is an omnivorous bird native to the Japanese archipelago, to which it is endemic. Despite their weight, wild turkeys, unlike their domesticated counterparts, are agile, fast flyers. In ideal habitat of open woodland or wooded grasslands, they may fly beneath the canopy top and find perches. They have very good eyesight, but their vision is very poor at night. They will not see a predator until it is too late. The wild turkey, throughout its range, plays a significant role in the cultures of many Native American tribes all over North America. Outside of the Thanksgiving feast, it is a favorite meal in Eastern tribes. The greater sage grouse is a permanent resident in its breeding grounds but may move short distances to lower elevations during winter. It makes use of a complex lex system in mating and nests on the ground under sagebrush or grass patches. It forages on the ground, mainly eating sagebrush but also other plants and insects. Greater sage grouse do not have a muscular crop and are not able to digest hard seeds like other grouse. The species is in decline across its range due to habitat loss and has been recognized as threatened. 